get. I am so, so, so excited um, to be on here tonight. I have the honor of chatting with Miss Miranda. She is so amazing. If you guys have not gotten to know her yet, you are in for a treat tonight. Um, we got to know each other just through um, a couple of groups that we were put in together and then have just developed a friendship. She is like literally the sweetest soul ever. Um, and so I'm super excited for you guys to hear from her tonight. I'm just going to start it off by letting her kind of take it away. Um, and I just can't wait for everybody to be blessed to hear you and meet you tonight. You can unmute yourself, I think, girl. Hey, everyone. Can yeah. you hear me fine? Woo, something's about to happen tonight. My, my Wi-Fi is usually right on point. I purchased the biggest one and it just went like crazy for a second. So um, first off, you guys, I do apologize ahead of time. I will have severe trigger warnings on this. My own team has not heard my full story because I usually filter it quite a bit. So, but like I told you, Kelsey, um, God's want me to share my story. So I'm already emotional <laughs> and I haven't even started yet. So, um, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. We appreciate you. And like, we're, I'm, I, I mean, it's such an honor for you to be on here and I'm excited that God prompted you and that you're listening to him. So everybody give her some love in the comments. She's about to share some scary stuff. So just, just love on her and let her know that everything we want it all, all of it is welcome here. Okay. Thank you. I love you to pieces. Um, so I'm going to tell you a bit of a story. Um, and so bear with me a little bit because all the puzzle pieces kind of fit together in a certain way. And my hope tonight is that you hear this story and feel inspired motivated that you feel like you can do this too and less of pity I feel bad for her okay so that's the only thing I promise like I hope for for tonight and why I'm gonna be super unfiltered you know what like we're gonna go a little far here yes yes take it right off right off so you guys want the real me let's go for it all right Yes, I love it. I'm so hyped right now. <laughs> this is getting me excited just watching her do this. So I love you guys. Like, we're going to do this. Here's Miranda Yes Keep for you guys. So I'm going to start talking about the younger me. Okay, so bear with it. <clears throat> we're going to go there tonight, Sunnies. <laughs> I'm so ready for it. I'm so ready for it. And let me see. Now I can actually see you guys. All right, you guys. So starting off, I kind of didn't have much of a fighting chance even before I was even born. My mom is a runaway mama. Uh, she never graduated high school and she ran away with a 35 year old man when she was about 14. Okay. So that's how things had started. She was actually running away from him. Uh, when she was pregnant with me and I was born about a month early with the cord wrapped around my neck. That's how I entered the world. And that's kind of how the trend was most of my life. Okay. Um, so once my mom had me, we, we were poor, poor. Um, my biological father is a schizophrenic, manic depressive, psycho. Um, my mom ran away when, we were, when I was about two years old and it was after he had put a shotgun to our heads. Okay, um, so she ran away all the way to Beaver, Washington, which borders Forks, Washington. Anyone know Twilight? Yeah, it's that. <laughs> um, if you don't know much about the town, it's incredibly small. Um, population 3000. Um, and my mom's family is crazy too. Um, I was kind of just surrounded. So I lived with some really crazy people there. Um, and growing up was incredibly difficult. I don't have a lot of memories because things were so traumatic that my brain shut down. Um, and maybe some of you guys can relate to this and you haven't really shared your story, um, but I, I, I have blackouts. There's a lot of moments I don't remember a single thing and I found out later. Um, so my biological father also had molested me um, and my mom fought really hard for us to stay with her and she just about lost us to him because there was a lot of corrupt things going on. And so I have phobias of 
police officers and things like that because of things that had stemmed from that. Um, phobia of the dark, you know, things like that. Um, because of all the traumas that had happened, I couldn't people. It's taken me a lot to do this. Um, and it's not even comfortable, but I know God wants to be here. Um, and so growing up, it was my mom, it was my sister, and those were my rock. Anyone else try to talk to me or whatever, I would either scream or cry. And because of that, um, I had a lot of issues when I went to school. So as an elementary school kid, uh, I was not normal. Um, the teacher couldn't talk to me or anything. All of my report cards say she's very smart, but she has social problems. There's something wrong. Um, and I actually got held back a grade because of it. I also have learning disabilities. So especially when I get stressed or really tired, I have dyslexia, so I see backwards. I also have ADHD, which I, I have never vocalized that. Um, my brain does not work normal. I forget things all the time. I even have forgotten things with like my first kiss with my husband, like something that you should remember. I have no memories of certain things. Um, and that's why I will be here tonight doing this. <laughs> All right, so my growing up, I was just a little bit of an odd duck. Um, but because I was so scared of people, I just tried to stay quiet. Um, quiet and in the background and kind of shy away from people. Um, so growing up was really hard. I got bullied really, 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 really bad. Um, because I was the quiet one, they liked to pick on me. Um, and my mom had remarried. She babysat for him, it was kind of interesting. Um, and then she remarried with him. Um, and then things got kind of bad. It was really good for a little bit and then it got bad. Um, he got a back injury and then all of a sudden we had a lot of money and then we had no money. And so we lived in poverty. Um, growing up, I lived in two cold metal trailers pieced together on rough land. There was not real water coming in. It was just a garden hose that was attached to a sprinkler that was not filtered. Um, and so there was no real running water. It would freeze all the time, no laundry, um, no nothing. It was just in the middle of nowhere. And um, I would do my homework around like kerosene lanterns surrounding me, which is why I wear the glasses. And I learned early on that life was not so easy. <laughs> and I had a really bad relationship with God I was just angry all the time because I was a good person and I didn't understand why all the bad things happened to me. You know, um, I grew up in an alcoholic household where my stepdad would just yell all day long. Um, a lot of screaming matches, some scary things. And because I was already traumatic, uh, traumatized from before, it was just really hard as an upbringing with it. Um, and so fast forward, I didn't get school clothes. My, my kids are spoiled rotten now, but I did personally did not get school clothes. I had a new outfit for kindergarten and that was the only outfit I'd ever had every single year in my school. Um, it was thrift store, uh, thrift store clothes. And it's not like thrift stores today because they're kind of cool now. <laughs> um, thrift stores where we were at was like old granny clothes that were like smelly and had stains on them and was way too big. Um, and so with it, I'm like, okay, like I have to work hard. And I was like this seven-year-old kid with a broken little clipboard. And I would work so hard around the house, five cents cleaning up the cat litter box, five cents sweeping up the living room, things like that. And I would save all my change and I would pay for my school clothes. Um, and that was how I was raised never a bone pit. There was never a rich relative, nothing like that. When I was a senior in high school, um, I actually met my husband in the fifth grade, which is kind of weird and random. Um, I was born in Cali. He was born on Pacific Islands in the middle of nowhere, but for some reason we both ended up in little town of Forge, Washington. Um, and I truly believe he came to my life to save my life. Um, and so my senior year of high school, because I was a grade, different, right? I was 18 in the 11th grade. I got my own place, which was kind of ballsy and crazy. Most people don't get their own place when you're still in high school. Um, it was crazy. My senior year of high school, I still have nightmares about it because I was late all the time. 
I'm a straight A student because I'm kind of a nerd. <clears throat> um, I had five different jobs in high school. I cleaned teacher houses. I waitressed. I was a bookkeeper for a trucker. You name it. All right. So I've always just worked hard for what I wanted. Get out of high school. And um, actually, I didn't even tell you a big piece. And I was going back and forth whether or not I even wanted to say it tonight because it's a big deal. Uh, when I was entering middle school, um, I went to a relative's house as before I was 16, so I couldn't work normal. And uh, my aunt had said that I could come over to clean up their house and earn some money so I can have some school clothes. And that night, my cousin attempted to rape me. He fed me alcohol for the very first time, bribing me with ice cream because I was still a child. And um, it was bad enough where I had to go to the hospital the next day for a rape kit and everything. Um, and he was the star quarterback for the town. And if you are from a small town, you know what big of deal that is. And so I got bullied so bad that I was paralyzed on half my face. It was bad, you guys, for two years solid. They were real, like just relentless with it. Um, and so that was really, really, really hard. Um, I couldn't tell you how many times I've attempted suicide, um, but God just isn't done with me yet. And so then I got the place with the high school. When I moved out, there was kind of an interim time because I got accepted into a radiology program for x-ray. Um, I needed a job that was really quick because I didn't have mom and dad to help with college. They didn't even care that I went to college. Um, they honestly thought I was going to stay in that little town and I didn't, didn't want to. So I um, got out of there and got pregnant. So I was 19 years old, literally had just graduated high school, waiting to get into my college. And we had an oopsie. And it's just interesting how God works because had it not been for her, I don't know what would have happened because my depression was so bad. Um, she saved me and she's just the most precious gift I could have ever gotten. And so I started my radiology program at four months pregnant. They told me to drop out because not a single person had ever made it. It's a very, very strict program. You, it's like worse than high school. Like you can never be late. You could only miss like four days out of like six months or something nuts. Um, and they said, there's no way that you're going to make it. Well, <laughs> I'm kind of stubborn in that regard. Okay. So I got a 4.0 and said, kiss it <laughs> and just worked really, really hard. I started working 16 hour shifts before she was even born. Um, and then it was just like super speed because all of a sudden I'm like, all oh, right, like I'm getting money. Like this is the first time in my life. I was still with my husband. Um, and she was little, little, like six months old, little. And I started working like 16 plus hours in my day. I pulled overtime. I worked at a different hospital. I had no days off in my month. It was that crazy. Um, and that was like it for a little while. And then um, I proposed to my husband because I'm impatient. I'm like, yeah, let's just get married 8808. Okay. <laughs> so we're, we're gearing up for the wedding. We have an oopsie. So I was actually pregnant when I got married uh, with baby number two. Unfortunately, if you guys remember with uh, what it was at 2006, seven, that's when the last economy went down. Um, so all of a sudden we were doing great. He was working as a, as a patient transporter at the hospital. I was working at a different one. Money was coming in and we're doing good. We had like this little house rental and we were working on possibly buying a home. And then that happened. All of a sudden, if, uh, I don't know how your guys' family is, but Pacific Islanders are very much like family oriented. We took in about 20 something people in a small little household like overnight. Our credit score slept. We couldn't even like, I remember going shopping for food and it was $800 in one day and it lasted only so many days. Um, and so everything tanked from that moment. And I wanna share this part because people ask me, well, why did you sign up? This all happened and it carried. So we lost all of our vehicles, but one went into severe debt. We finally kinda came up for water for our food for a little bit. And then we moved and we kind of split ways. Um, however, that carried with everything. Uh, so as time went on, um, you know, we were starting to do a little bit better. We were both working full time, overtime, 
Um, we had our two, two kids and then we moved into a bigger house and we're like, yeah, you know, things are good. And then, um, five years ago, um, well, I should say about six years ago, things started getting a little worse. Things got more expensive, more bad decisions. I've never had anyone teaching me how to budget and all the things that adulting, you know, entails and whatnot. And so, um, six years ago we were drowning. Um, I'm just like, gosh, like, and I'm, I'm the one that does the budget. Like I do the finances and all the things I'm the math nerd. And so I hit a lot of it for my husband thinking, well, I'm going to get us caught up, you know, like it's all going to be fine. I could never get us caught up. Um, and then he, he started recognizing that I was doing like extreme couponing and that was like Christmas presents and, you know, like, what is she doing over here? You know, or not eating at night saying I wasn't hungry, but you can only use that for so long when they catch on, you know, I started taking the kids birthday monies for food on the table but it got to the point where we didn't make it paycheck to paycheck. We would get to that Wednesday before and have nothing to eat in the house, no gas in the car, nothing. I would go to a relative's house and just pretend like we're visiting and we were really there to eat. Um, and so things were really rough right before I had started. And then I realized I was pregnant with baby number three, definitely an oopsie. I'd given away all my baby stuff and I jinxed it. And a week later, we got the devastating news that my mom had cancer. And I, I told you the beginning part because I want you to realize like, yes, our moms are like our moms. But when you have such a traumatic childhood, she was literally my rock. It's why I tried so hard in life and why I wanted to do better. I talked to my mom every day, even as an adult at 30 years old, I would literally call her on the phone every day. She got annoyed by it, <laughs> but I did it because I just love her, you know, like I just wanted to hear the life advice, you know, and just hear her voice and, and all of the things. And so we get these def devastating news and given they're still in that small little dinky town and I'm close by Seattle, Washington. So there's a, a big difference there. Um, my mom's stubborn as freak. The worst of the worst, you guys like, you cannot tell her what to do. So I tried multiple times trying to get her because I worked in the hospital field, you know, like I, that was my world would not come over, would not come over. And all I could do was try to get a hold of certain doctors and stuff to try to see, because I know the medical language and she just would not tell me things. Um, all I could hear was, it was just a little spot on her lung, not a big deal. A low dose of chemo will knock it out, no worries. Okay. And then she comes to my house that October and she looked pretty good. Like she had gained a little bit of weight. I fed her so much of her pepperoni pizza. Like I did her hair, like we were having a good time. And then the next month was November, right? Thanksgiving month. And so I get a little emotional this time of year. Um, I was very pregnant. I don't have small babies. My husband looks like a giant Samoan, okay? I have huge babies and this one was a 10 pounder, okay? I looked like I was pregnant at, with twins at this point. I just got canceled. I'm just like, mom, like, I don't want to drive two and a half hours. Like, I just don't want to. No, you have to, da, da, da. So I go, leave husband at home, took the kids. And I'm like, okay, whatever, you know? And I walk in the door and I knew, I knew that the cancer had spread. She looked like death. And I'm like, I even see it on my daughter's face. Like just the smile come off. Like, cause we both do at the same time. And I'm just like, this sucks. So I'm like, can we please go to the hospital like right now? She's like, no, 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 no. The whole time she couldn't eat Thanksgiving dinner. She's like holding her stomach, just like, oh, it hurts. Um, and the next day I woke her up. I went home, she went home. I woke her up, I'm like, get to the hospital right now. Like, I'm not gonna leave you alone. And she was so mad I woke her up. Goes to the hospital and she never came home. So it was aggressive, it had spread everywhere. It was suffocating her organs inside. I did eventually get her on this side, but by then the doctor, the worst moment of my life right there is hearing the doctor say, there's nothing we can do. And so like I had to hold her as she was like bawling her eyes out. And it was just, you guys, it was the worst thing. I don't wish it on anybody. All said and done, I lost my mom from six months of her diagnosis, and I was eight and a half months pregnant with baby Kate. And 
or one of her wishes, she had two of them, was number one, she made the joke. She's like, I really want him born on dad's birthday. And two, please take care of dad. And me and him didn't get along too well because he like was an alcoholic. Like he was an asshole growing up. Sorry, I need to filter myself. He was not the, the greatest growing up at all. And so number one, he was born on his birthday which was really special. My mom was there that day, you guys. I didn't even feel the baby come out. Like it was so magical and so special. And um, it definitely my relationship with my dad is different. So that is what happened then, okay? So I just popped out this 10 pound baby, trying to grieve for my mom. Finances are all crap. I'm trying to figure out how to file for bankruptcy, but I couldn't pay the $400 fee to actually file it. Um, and that was when I had sat my husband down to really explain the full extent of how bad things had gotten. Um, and that's when I tried ending my life three different times. Um, I had walked to the lake and I had tried to, I was going to start the car in the garage with the door down. Um, the devil goes after you when you have your weakest moments for sure. And that, that was when I felt like a failure. I had failed my husband and I had failed my babies and I missed my mama. But what stopped me more than anything was just knowing that I didn't want my babies to go through what I had just gone through with my mom. A week later, somebody mentioned this business to me. This business literally saved my life. Um, and so my husband definitely told me, no, if you have an unsupportive spouse, you probably <laughs> know how that feels. We didn't have money. Like, where was that going to come from? I had went behind his back and I sat on the decision for about three weeks. Um, but I knew that if I didn't do something that I was afraid of myself, if I'm going to be really honest right now, I didn't think that I could push through um, because everything was going bad. And so uh, I signed up behind his back. I used the cell phone money to pay it. It was also 4th of July. Um, so there was no fireworks. And so I definitely was in the dog house and kids upset, everyone upset. Um, and so I signed up. You guys, I had 48 Facebook friends. I was the person that never posted. <laughs> you don't even know what my kids looked like probably. Like I just never posted. Um, and I did that on purpose because I had such a traumatic childhood and I'm an introvert. I don't like people. But I like people, you know what I mean? Like, um, and so I started and you guys like, I, I worked with old farts on the weekends for 16 hours each day. Like they were certainly not potentials. I had no social life, zilch, negative, nada. All of my best friends had pieced out the moment my mom had died. It was like too heavy for them. I had no friends. And the one person that I thought would be supportive of my spouse wasn't. And that's how I started. No Instagram either, by the way. Um, and so I started and I freaking fought my butt off because my babies deserved a better life. And it was as simply as that. So um, I started, I didn't know what the hell I was doing, you guys. I've never done anything remotely like this before. No sales experience, no nothing, requiring to put myself out there. Um, I suffer from severe anxiety, panic attacks, all of the things. And back then it was out of control. Like I couldn't go into a store without like just about passing out or I would hyperventilate where I just get out of there. So I would put my, I would have my husband go shopping. Um, and so when I started this and I'm like, crap, like the, I have to actually like talk about me. I had panic attacks all the time um, and they were really debilitating ones. Um, and so baby steps, baby steps, baby steps. Um, my first two weeks I hit Ruby, I don't know how, <laughs> I don't even know what I did. I shared my results and talked to whoever and felt really silly with the whole thing. But when you talk to enough people, I talked to my mailman, <laughs> I talked to the, to the little corner store guy. I don't know who I was on you. Okay. But eventually enough people signed up that I got Ruby and I didn't even know what Ruby was. <laughs> all right. I didn't even know we had all the products we had. I thought we only had the wraps. Okay. Um, but I just ran with it and learning along the way. And I really just wanted some, some grocery money. Like I didn't think I was going to make anything. My, 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 my self-esteem when I had started was so low that I never looked in the mirror. Like, I know that probably sounds crazy to some, but I literally just wouldn't even look at myself. Um, 
it's why my, my business name, you know, we all have our unique one. It's slim selfie because I had never, I didn't have a single selfie in my phone, nothing. Um, so I've worked really hard to get to this point because I would never do something like this. I'm just saying, okay. Um, first two weeks, Ruby, took me a little while to go diamond first year. Um, but along the way, I started dreaming bigger and I had that, that fire again. I was so bored at my previous job. I was a radiology supervisor. I'd hit that high. Um, but I worked with really toxic people and the medical field is not what it looks like in the movies. It's hard. <laughs> it's really hard. Um, and my boss was not a nice man. He wanted in my pants the whole 10 years I worked with him. Um, and so it was incredibly stressful because I hid that from my husband with fear that I would lose my job because I was the breadwinner. Um, and so I had to deal with this all the time, whether there and then home was really hard. My kids remember the screaming matches because when you have finance problems, like you fight a lot and it's gross. So we were having, even in the beginning, kind of, we were having really gnarly fighting matches. And then it got to the point we, we took in my niece again, Pacific Islanders is what we do. Okay. Um, and so I had four kids. One was a brand newborn. I started when he was about three months old, had my other two. This was when my daughter, good Lord, if you have a teen, <laughs> oh, okay. All the things running away, all the stuff. Okay. Was dealing with that. Took in my niece that had, had some issues. Okay. So she had to go through counseling, some things. And then my, my middle child, my husband worked full-time overtime never saw him. Our only family time was a few hours on a Monday night. That's it. And that's hoping you guys, today's Monday. You probably felt like your hair's all slicked back like this nuts. Okay. Mondays are nuts. So it's work, school, you know, homework, give them a snack, do some chores, you know, and you hope that you have this little smidgen of time to do like a board game usually didn't work out that way. And it sucked. I'm like, really like this, my mom was a stay at home mom. And I like value the, that, you know, um, and then things started getting a little bad with the panic attacks to the point where every evening I lost my crap. And I don't mean a little bit. I mean, to the point where I shut down, I would hand the newborn to my oldest and say, I will see you in an hour. And I would go down the street and go have me some soup. Okay. <laughs> like just sit there and have some soup and just don't. Um, but it was getting to the point where it was like five, six days um, a week. And that's not healthy. And it got so bad one particular day that I freaked out on my husband. I'm like, you need to come home. Like, I can't do this. You can hear the screaming kids in the background. Again, preteen, you guys just shoot me. Like, it was awful. She broke me. And um, he came home that night and we had a good talk. And he's like, well, like, finally, if you, you know, it looks like you're kind of doing okay with the business. If you, you know, kick a little butt, like, I'll come home. I'm like, what? And so I took the time to research. Cause at this point I still didn't know what products we had and all the things you guys. Um, and so I took a, a, a couple months to just research Jade Hooper. Thank the Lord. <laughs> I actually ended up not signing up with my friend that joined the business. I signed up with somebody different and it was a really bad choice. Um, I was a loner when I started. Um, she's no longer with us. Thank the Lord. Um, so he said this, and then I hit the ground running. And within a couple of months, I actually brought him home. And that was about the year mark. And that changed everything. All of a sudden, I had a present husband, a present daddy. You guys, like, we have made the most awesome memories. Like, I don't care about the things. I care about the time. Because when you lose important people in your life, you don't look at things the same way anymore. And I don't know how long the Lord has me around. And I just want to soak up whatever time I have with the people I love the most. So when he came home, man, our marriage is spicy, spicy now. Yeah. <laughs> like it changed everything. <laughs> um, like the kids are just the coolest kids. They went from flunking school and like getting called to the principal office and all that to getting A's and B's and like getting the student of the month, you know, and just so cool. Like we went on trips. We went to Disneyland for the first time. I was a poor kid. So like, we didn't go to things like that, went to Disneyland, we've done huge trips. We've done, I won the Bahamas thing for the company. You know, that was like a second honeymoon. Cause remember I was pregnant for my first one. I just was thrown up the whole time. Um, and so Bahamas, um, and then I just started getting better at this stuff. I didn't know what I was doing, but I was getting better at it. Um, I do have one of the most diverse teams that is out there. Um, 
a good like 75% probably is Pacific Islanders. Uh, my husband is from a really remote set of islands, Micronesia. You might have to Google it. Okay. You fly to Hawaii, you fly again. Their minimum wage is like 75 cents an hour. It's pretty nuts. And so to have a huge Pacific Islander team where you think of $150 fast start, how life changing that is. So it's been really cool in that regard, just being able to represent. We had a, a top VIP person that popped as a triple and she was averaging more money than the governor down there. And she didn't have Wi-Fi. She would walk down the street and go bum it from like a local church and it was still kind of iffy. When there's a will, there's a way you guys, for real, okay? Um, so it's been interesting. Sorry, I have like a hair mouth. Um, and then what else has happened? We've earned about $105,000 in cash bonuses. We became the number one income earner for Washington State, 111 worldwide. Bought my husband a really cool truck. He's been talking about this damn truck for like 20 years, you guys. <laughs> and when like last, not last year, but the year before, um, I bought him his $75,000 Ram truck. That was pretty freaking cool. We moved across the state. We live in a cool house with a pool in the back. We're currently trying to buy a home by credit score it's going it's going got 200 points increase we we've, we've done things that I never thought that somebody like me could do because I I mean you you hear it like I every day is a battle just with my brain you know like I can't even focus <laughs> it's like squirrel um but I just try hard and that's what I've always done is just the effort you could control you know um, I also have, if you think there would not be enough, I have multiple autoimmune problems and five different heart things. So I'm kind of like a walking hot mess all the time. I'm always hurting. I have a herniated disc in my back. So just sitting on this chair, it's making my butt go numb. Um, but I know that like God has put me in here for a purpose and a reason. Like he saved my life. And who am I to take that away? You know, I wanted to say no to Kelsey. And me being honest, she's so perfect and like pretty and like, I'm, and I hate talking. <laughs> I certainly did. I've never wanted to say like my story all the way. Um, but God does things on purpose. And so you think about, you were so special that he put this business in your life. He certainly didn't say, here's a business, but maybe don't work it. <laughs> like that makes no sense. Um, and I'm just so grateful because I have such a giving and loving heart. I have given more in the last couple of years than I have ever with the 15 years I worked at the hospital by far. And it's what fuels me every day is knowing that I have more to give. The days that I don't want to get out of bed or I can't get out of physically, I can't get out of bed. I can work in bed. <laughs> like, I can do that. Um, we just, we get out of your own box. You know, like I was in every box that you could have thought of. And that's why I wanted to share tonight. Um, it's just that anything is possible, truly, you guys. Um, and I'm not perfect. I'm always imperfect. <laughs> but I try really, really hard every day. And I always try to show my team that, you know, just be a good, kind person and work hard. And it will pay off because God sees it and he will bless every single moment of it. Oh, my gosh. This is so good. Like, I'm like, I'm just like, go over here, swollen, crying. Okay. Um, no, but seriously, that was so amazing. And there's a couple things that I just want to, I just want to touch on. Um, when, when did you find Jesus? Like in the business? Like, was that, was that like a moment thing? Or was that just like a gradual exposure thing? Cause I know, like, I mean, there were times when I was mad at God, you know? And I think that with, with all the things that you went through, how did you kind of overcome that? So I grew up in a Jehovah Witness household, not the funnest thing. So I had no holidays. I never got to celebrate Christmas. I didn't get to celebrate anything. Um, so it was already bad enough, like with all the things. And then you add on that, like, really, really love my dad, but still. Okay. Um, and so I was really confused growing up because my dad would use it in a bad way. He would say, well, if you go to church, you can go to your friend's house, you know? And so it was like kind of used in a really weird sense. Okay. And it was boring. I would go there. I have ADHD. You cannot tell me to sit in a chair and listen to a two hour lecture. I'm going to fall asleep or I'm going to fidget the whole time. <laughs> it was pure torture, torture, you know, and I didn't even understand anything. And so that was my relationship growing up. And all, I felt like there was a God, but I just didn't understand why he never helped me in the moments of my greatest despair, you know, and I would be laying, we had this 
the other trailer, the cold trailer, I had mine face a certain way and I would just stare at the stars and I would see shooting stars and whatever and just try to talk to them. I'm like, I don't understand. Like, can you just throw something my way? Like just something, you know? Um, and then as I got older, like I felt like there was something there, but even, I will be honest, you guys, my wedding was not religious because I didn't understand things yet. Um, and then we had a church group come into town and then my mind was more like that open door, like, okay, well, maybe I'll read some books or something. <laughs> um, but it wasn't until this business when I recognized all the puzzle pieces fitting together that I'm like, okay, I get it now. I get it. And I had a moment like where I just bawled, like I get why I went through what I went through because because of all this, I'm who I am today. Like, I can't say that I'm disappointed that I went through the things because I wouldn't be as cool of a leader. I wouldn't be as good of a friend. I wouldn't, you know, like, and I can now help people in a different way. And now I have an avenue where like my mom, had she been alive, she could have done this business because she didn't graduate high school. And one of her dying things was that she felt like she had failed because she never got to go to college and stuff. And she's like, wow, like I didn't even have like a good life. And of course I didn't, I was like, what are you talking about? You're a mom, like that's the hardest thing ever. Um, I did a bucket list with her and that's how the conversation had been brought up is that she felt like a failure, you know? And I could have provided somebody like my mama to this business because you don't have to have a high school diploma, you know? And so it was not an overnight thing. Um, but I am nothing without God. I would be dead. And I know that he has big moments for me. And I kind of said a short version of the whole business. Who here has been here for like longer than like two years? Maybe put it in the chat. If you've been here for a little while, you'll probably go, you've probably gone through a little bit. Um, I've had all of the things happen. So not filtered right now. I hope, I don't know who's going to be listening to this later on. Um, my enroller was a bully. She's known as a bully <laughs> out in the world. Okay. Um, and not only did I try to figure things out, she tried sabotaging my business multiple times. Um, she took my elephant leg, um, the one that was on the island. And um, that was 105,000 group volume, you guys. 105,000. That's half of an ambassador. <laughs> okay. And it was an overnight thing, basically. And so all of a sudden I had this huge team and had it been just a couple of months, I would have ranked as ambassador because they changed all the rules. Okay. So all this went down <laughs> and I was just like, oh my gosh, like, what am I going to do? Um, and so I've had all the seasons. I've had the, the crazy stuff, like the mean girl club, all of this stuff, but I just, anyone read the last arrow book? It was put in my life right when that had happened because I was literally thinking about possibly throwing in the towel because I'm, I'm a hard lover. Like I will give you literally the socks off my feet. I've done it. <laughs> okay. Like I will give everything I have. And then some, I will not shower and like all the things I will give you me. And so when people are really mean, I don't understand it because like I love so hard, you know? And so when this all happened, I didn't understand. I was, I was just so sad because I knew those families and their babies and all the things. And, you know, you're going to have moments in this business where it's not so easy. And, um, but still like God put you here. He didn't put you here to go through it. Then like, peace. Right. I know that I am supposed to still give. And so I know that that was kind of a long drawn out thing, but it's still an evolution, right? Like it's an everyday thing. It's an everyday battle. Like it's not an easy thing. We get so freaking busy that you're like, crap, like, did I pray today? Like, did I talk to him today? Like, and so I try so hard, you guys, this year has been a tough one. Anyone want to? <laughs> Oh yeah, it's been a doozer. I just put a funny quote, like, what was it like? It's been five years with 2020, 2020 or something. I don't even know. Um, but it was it's not been an easy year. Um things got really bad. 
we had moved and then all of that, that consequences of the mean girls leaving, I call them the mean girl, okay, um, had, I have a major glare, sorry. Um, all the mean girl stuff had, all the consequences of that had, had hit. So we, when I went to conference, you know, I was so ashamed because I'm around all these leaders and I was sitting at Diamond. I could no longer afford my bills. Okay, this is me being really unfiltered right now. This was about a year ago. Okay, so I hit conference and the only way that I was able to go is I loaned. I'm still paying on that damn thing. Okay, I loaned out because I knew I had to get to conference. I knew that there was messages that I had to be there. And then I got home and I was so fired up right? Like if you guys were, I love conference. I absolutely love conference. Came home and I got the freaking flu literally two days. And I was in bed for like two weeks. The whole house got it. I'm like, really? <laughs> I went to the ER and everything. Cause when I get sick, it's not easy. Um, and so that had happened. And then I lost my father-in-law and he was like that second major person in my life. It was a sudden death and it hit hard. It was my, my husband's dad. Um, he fell and it killed him. Um, and so then COVID hit within a couple of weeks. Okay. So his funeral, we were technically not supposed to have his funeral because we broke the law. Okay. And then they said, by the way, we're selling the house you're in. <laughs> Are you freaking kidding me right now? Like really? And so you guys, like we have moments where we want to throw in the towel. And I could have easily a year ago. And I, I had this time where I, I was getting depressed again and the suicidal thoughts were starting again. And I'm like, man, like this is bad. And I remember a really rough evening and I'm like, wait a minute, you know, like, so I sat down and I visualized saying goodbye to my kids again when I walk out the door. And my, my, my smallest boy, Kate, he's a wild one. <laughs> he's a mama's boy. And all I could see is just that devastated face as I go out the door and I leave him all day again. And I had missed out on all of my daughter's first, first walks, first everything, because I was working. And I had vowed when I went all in with this business, I put in my, my notice for work. I put in my notice and I didn't even, I didn't even give them the two weeks. And I never wanted to feel that ever again. And that was my it moment so many months ago. It was like, I, it's time to fight. And you got to freaking fight and it's an everyday fight and it amounts to what is your relationship with God? Are you putting them, do you need to dust them off a little bit? Like, cause that's probably why things are going to shit. Okay. Again, excuse my language. Okay. But for real, it's like, I didn't, couldn't even tell you at that point when I, I was mad at him. I was mad because I lost my father-in-law and I didn't understand it. And so it is an everyday thing. I like to blare Christian music in the morning, just blare it. <laughs> like that is like, yes, come to me. So when you started your Zoom off, that was the coolest thing ever. Um, I journal all the time. I have the prayer of Jabez. The first thing I write in my journal every time I write in my journal. If you don't know that prayer, you really should. It's life transforming. Um, so I love God now. I don't I always understand why things happen the way that they are, but I love them now. I love that. And I think like, it's cool because sometimes it's like, everybody wants to have this story of like one time this moment happened and God spoke to me. And I, you know, it's like, that's not always the case. It's, it has to be, you know, it, it is a, it's a relationship and it's not a moment in time thing because moments fade, memories fade. But as we continue as, as each of you guys, have or start growing a relationship with Jesus. Even if you already have one, you're going to grow one. And it's going to continue to blossom. You will see that it's not a one moment thing. Oh, then it grew. Oh, I saw it grow. It's like, no, you, you, you actually, the moments that it does grow are the actual moments that you are praying for him to get you out. And you're the most mad at him. Right. And one thing that's so cool is I heard Miranda say, like, I've given more in the last couple of years than I did all 15 years of nursing. And I have such a giving heart. And all I kept hearing her say is given. All I'm thinking is all she's doing tonight is giving us. Right. And it's not financial. And some of you guys are so dang obsessed with what the finances is when you don't even look in the mirror and see what you do have to give. And I think it's so crucial that we all look inside. And I'm going to tell you, listen, if you can't hear my son, he's broke his leg on Friday and we are moving to Texas 
and we're selling our house and we're buying a house. I got peed on today. Okay. It's fine. But listen, my life is not always perfect. My, he's, he's crying for mom, but do you want to know that when, when I know that that's what he would be like all day at daycare, if I had to go to work, he has a moment where he's crying for me all day. If I did not make the sacrifices that I've made to show up and work this business. That, that doesn't mean life doesn't happen to us. That doesn't mean that things aren't going to hit. That doesn't mean that we don't even come with a whole sack of potatoes dragging behind us. That's our baggage. But what it means, like she just said, is that every single day you choose to fight. Yeah. My hardest rank, I know that I've hit all the way to Prez. My hardest rank was double diamond. Um, my brother is currently in prison for murder charges. Um, again, I have a crazy family, you guys. <laughs> I'm like the, the white sheep. <laughs> um, he's in prison for it. But that month I was going double diamond. I lost my favorite uncle, who was my middle child's best friend, like literally. It was a medical thing that they, they killed him on accident, basically. He died. Pacific Islander funerals, I have some of my team on there. They're not normal. They're a month long process. And it's like hundreds of people coming into your house, like hundreds. And as an introvert, you can't have that happen. Like you can't do that <laughs> because you're shut down. Okay. Now, now add in autoimmune problems, right? So my body started shutting down physically. I had massive infections from my lymph nodes. I'm trying to pack up my brother's stuff and like get his stuff before police come and all these crazy things. And then there was like three or four other things that had happened that month that were just terrible. I still ranked my double diamond. I was on the curve, you guys. Voice and potentials as I was like waving my husband with the U-Haul because he didn't know how to drive the thing because those things are huge, okay? I was in the dark and it's pouring down rain and I can't even like see anything and I'm like trying to voice potentials. You will always fight for things if it is worth it to you, right? I got my double diamond. I hit the, the ER the very next day and my that was when I was still working and they were my doctor friends. She's like, you could be dead right now. The infection had reached to my spinal cord. So not the smartest thing on that part. So don't do that. But you guys, like, I think that there's a lot of people on here tonight that you're going through some sh crap. Okay. Some really bad things. And you probably haven't shared it, but you're in it and you're in that, that quicksand and you feel so suffocated that it just about seems impossible to get out of it. I will tell you, it is worth fighting for. Can you imagine if you can visually imagine for a second, if you do make it, okay? What if you do make it doing this business? And what does that even mean? What if you have $25,000 paychecks coming into the household? How life transforming would it be? My yellow's out there. You guys, that's my primary color. I'm yellow, red, okay? Yellow, red. Can you imagine, and I have one of my teammates on here tonight and I bawled my eyes out. She just shared this a couple days ago. She saved June, July, August paychecks. No, July, August, and September paychecks. And she's going to buy a Christmas for a teammate, basically. Her, the, that, that family has never had a Christmas. Can you imagine providing something that? Like I get goosebumps. That's what you're sitting on. You know, as a household, we've reached as high as $35,000 in a single month. Somebody like me? Like, what the heck? Look, you guys heard my story. If there was something that could have happened, it happened. Right? And every day is a battle, but it's freaking worth it. The time will pass anyways. <laughs> like, right? And you've got a choice right now. You might be going through a season where there's nobody behind you. Maybe you lost your team. Maybe you have a team that's not very nice. Right? And you're doing all the things and you feel like you're doing all the things and no one wants to help you. You only need three superstars to be the very top rank. That's it. And our world is huge. You guys, you will find your freaking tribe. All right. So I hope that you guys gained something out of this. This was not comfortable in any means. I probably got to go change my underpants. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> this was seriously so good i'm so grateful for you i seriously don't even know what to say but do you mind if i pray us out that would be freaking awesome okay awesome dear jesus we just come to you today so grateful for miranda we just thank you lord for putting it on her heart to speak her truth tonight um, we know that there's so many people on here whose lives were changed just from hearing that story just for giving them hope again jesus thank you for always pursuing miranda even when she wasn't pursuing you 
Lord, I thank you for continually um, just showing up, even when she didn't know it was you, for um, giving her her blessings with her children and her husband and allowing them to work, allowing you to work through them so that they can, they can transform her life. And now she's able to give to so many other people, not just financially, not just monetarily, but, but through her wisdom, through the things that she's experienced and through her story, Lord, we thank you so much for her team. We thank you for her leadership. And I just ask a, a prayer that you would just bless her abundantly, that you would bless her team, that that you would just enlarge her territory, that she would see increase, um, and that you would bless her for a thousand generations. Lord, I ask um, that you would bless every single person on here, Jesus, that you would bless them some way tonight, and that would, something that they learned tonight, that they, they could take it, and they can apply it to their lives, and that they can use it to serve you, and then also go out and give that wisdom to somebody else, give that knowledge to somebody else. Lord, I just ask... Uh, just encouragement to everybody tonight who's feeling discouraged, everybody who's feeling in any area of their life that they can't do it, that they're not strong enough, that they don't think that they just remember they don't have to lean on themselves, that they have the power that you've given them inside. So I ask that you would just help us activate that power, that you would help us release that power, and that we would be able to cast out anything that is weighing on our minds that's negative, any of that negativity, um, that we are just able to step away from it and we're able to receive all the goodness that you have because we know if it's not good, it's not done. And we thank you for always being there, Jesus. We thank you for pursuing us and we thank you for who you are. We're so, we're so grateful for what you've done, but we're so excited for what you're going to do. In your name we pray. Amen. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Um, Miranda, I can't even say thank you enough, but um, just know that you are so loved and valued. Bye guys. Bye guys.